Yeah. Yeah. Cut it. Cut it. Cut it. Cut it. Cut it. I feel like I'm in the goddamn Hunger Games with all these goddamn birds chirping. Taking the trash out. Just finished my walk. Did about two miles in 45 minutes again. Taking it real easy. Um, of course, doing it fasted. And I will be fasting until after my workout today. See how that goes. It is now 727, just finished episode 7 of Cut It, and basically I'm ready for my day, did my walk, worked on some YouTube, you know, answered some comments, and um, basically ready for the day, going to work now, getting ready for work. Got my gym bag. What do you know, the sun's out. That's the good thing about waking up early. You're never really late for work, because you're up. So my coworker, Steve, man, he's like, no call, no show right now, freaking, um, he's late for work. It's already 9.35, he's supposed to be here at 8.30. Um, and then his wife calls, doesn't know where he is, and. Now the school is calling Steve, saying that his daughter has a higher temperature and needs to be picked up. So we're kind of worried right now. Probably, uh, who knows, man. He drinks a lot, so he might be, I, I hope, I really hope he's passed out drunk, just like missing work right now and like not in jail or like, you know, DUI or, um, or hurt. To be continued. It is now 11.10 and basically Steve finally called in and he's passed out drunk on someone else's couch. Had us all freaking worried. I'm glad he's okay but um, I think he's gonna get written up and I don't think this is fair man. You get, you wake up on someone's couch and you're drunk and you get to take the whole day off and basically the work is disproportionate now and that means I'm doing more work. Some bullshit man. In the lab again, the supply room. Working on YouTube videos again. Trying to get it out, push out one a day, every weekday for y'all. Um, you know, five times a week. Walking to Walmart right now because I need a monster. So I'm feeling uneasy. So um, I feel like a monster would help me feel better. And I'm just gonna have an apple today as a snack because um, I don't think I'm gonna make it for this fast. I'm just getting too much of a anxious feeling. So let's see what, let's see if this stuff helps. All right guys, if you're ever having trouble fasting and you don't think you can make it through your fast, just get a piece of fruit. You know, keep it small. You're not gonna eat like a whole bowl of fruit. I, f I feel like that's um, what's misinterpreted sometimes. We're just having one apple. This is like 80, 70 calories. You know, not much at all. And then we'll have a zero calorie soft drink and the carbonation and the carbs from this are going to uh, aid in, so you can last throughout the day. Just, you know, placebo, I feel better already just having this in my stomach. Just wasn't feeling the intermittent fasting today, so I made two uh, packets of oatmeal as a pre-workout meal. In the parking deck right now, waiting for Wilson to get here. Man, I'm so freaking tired. Uh, and my fasting didn't go so well today. I had to eat apples. I had to eat oatmeal. And I think I know the reason. It's because I'm physically tired. Uh, I went to bed around 2 a.m. last night because I had to get the video going. Uh, woke up at five o'clock to upload the video so I could take my laptop to work 
So I woke up at 5 to upload it, and then I woke up at 6 again, because I went back to sleep after I uploaded it. And woke up at 6 so I can go walk, and then I've been up since 6, and I went to bed at 2, so... Um, I'm feeling it right now. Let's see how this workout goes. I'm just chilling in the garage right now. I'm like feeling the C4, you know, enter my system. Took my BCAAs and creatine. Let's see where I get. Let's see how it goes today. All right, Wilson just showed up. We are gonna enter the gym now and we go and kill it, or at least try to. Because, you know, I'm feeling the C4 now, but who knows how long it's gonna last. Starting a back workout with pull ups, and we're not gonna add any weight today, just doing body weight. Because sometimes, you know, you just don't feel like going heavy. So, I was going for high reps. I believe I was doing 10 on the first one to warm up, and then the next two sets, I'm gonna do 13 reps, and then I'm gonna finish off with 11 reps at the end. But this whole time, just focusing on that contraction at the very top. I like doing pull-ups before my rows. Um, some people, they feel like they get tired out from the pull-ups first for the heavy rows. But I feel like it warms me up. I get a good pull. But the only problem is, is my grip strength is definitely weakened from doing the pull-ups. Hope you guys have found your stance and are using it the same each time like I do. Like you never see me change my posture up. This is just how I've been doing it for years and has allowed me to increase my weight dramatically because I, I remember for a long time I was stuck on 70s and 80s uh, 80 pound rows but um, you know once you figure out your form will you uh, progress smoothly it was so crowded we had to move this bench over to the side where there was no padding and I was just throwing the weights on the ground. Which is fun. I really enjoy doing that. It kind of gives you the, uh, the sense of control over the, the heavy weight. Moving on to this hammer strength machine. And my posture. It's like a 45 degree angle. Like I, I feel like uh, I'm about to sprint almost. You know, just like putting my tw uh, my chest forward and right into that padding that's provided. Get your footing good and then you'll also be able to progress on those pulls as well. Posture and grip have to be the most important things for back. Even in deadlifts, if your posture is wrong, you're going to you're going to hurt your back. So it's even more critical on the deadlifts, but um, you know, majority of back workouts, you have to have good form. Whereas chest, you know, you can have some bad form for chest, and you can still get it up. Like you can you be using way too much front deltoid and trying to implement your triceps too much, resulting in like flared out form. So, but back, you know, you should definitely get that. Uh, figured out or else you're going to injure yourself. Um, do the 45 degree angle here and just pull it. You want to keep your legs close together so um, imagine pulling that rope just to the side of your legs. Don't move the elbows, just keep everything locked up and squeeze the, fr uh, the rear delts. Always doing progressive overload. Only when I'm really gassed out will I do a bunch of reps. Like, 
after a chest day, I'll probably do a bunch of flies with the same weight or something. But now we're moving on to deadlifts. Keeping my arms right over the bar. Bar right over the middle of my feet. And just pulling, keeping that back straight. Ended up feeling pretty strong at the end of the workout. This is 365 here. Haven't done this in a long time. But hit it for three reps. You know, 1800 calories a day, and I'm still hitting pretty strong uh, lifts. You know, you just gotta keep the intensity high. This is part of it. You know, you wanna keep, uh, set the bar high. And just because you're on low calories doesn't mean you should decrease the volume of your workout. I'm always shooting for more. Like how many different workouts can I add on? But usually time is a is um, a problem. So you know I'm, I'm always trying to race to get out, try to get as many different exercises in as possible. Moving on to bicep, because uh, you know doing the bro split back and by. Get some isolation work here done. Now I always see people with their grip all messed up here. Like the dumbbell placement that you're seeing right here is parallel to the padding. You don't want your arms slid off the side and then when you're coming up it's not even parallel to the padding. It's just, uh, you know, you're, it's just inconsistent. You're going to do a different form every time and you're going to get de deformities in the development of your biceps. So it's really important to pick a style or uh, a form that you want to use on this pad and continue to do it. So the way I did this exercise was I just increased the reps every set. So for the first set I did six, for the second set I did seven. And then for the third set, I did eight. Or I tried to do eight. I think I still got seven. Anyway, I definitely think you should be doing this exercise because it really shows how strong your bicep is. It virtually has no swing at all, so it's really uh, important that you can track and try to increase your strength on that exercise because that is actually a true teller of how strong your bicep is. Uh, now on these uh, hammer curls, I'm definitely swinging my body or giving a little twitch just to power through with my body if that makes sense and my shoulder but um, you know it's up to me to get that contraction and to make it work you know we can swing these all day but I literally as I swing this I am contracting my arm and if you are doing these today or tomorrow try to look out for that feeling and contract it all, all the way through so that pretty much sums it up for my workout. I'm going to end it with 15 minutes of incline cardio. And I will see you all next time. All right, really appreciate your time. Leave any comments or suggestions uh, or questions in the comment section. And hit the like button. And subscribe if you haven't. So I'll see you all. Now we got 12 ounces of leftover grilled chicken here. So I'm trying my selfie stick out today using the, the rear camera. It should be a lot better, but when I'm in the gym and I'm filming, my workouts, it's so much easier just to use the front facing camera because when I look at it, uh, I can actually see where my body is and I can center it. So that's a big deal in, uh, you know, creating at least, uh, you know, a good image for y'all to view.
And I really feel like, you know, something stable is better than something that's moving around all the time, like when someone else is filming. I mean, eventually the channel is going to get to that, you know, but that's kind of far away because, you know, I'm still working this job and I think eventually, well, we'll talk about it later. I got a lot of plans for, um, you know, my personal life in terms of working a job and everything. Um, but, uh, yeah, today was back day. I really th didn't think I was going to do well, but, you know, I still did it. Uh, it's 11.24 right now. I'm going to get some shut-eye, and uh, I'm going to do some fasted walking tomorrow morning as well. And, you know, I really didn't think I was going to do so much fasted walking in the morning, but, or so frequently, but, you know, uh, it's actually a really good addition to your day. You know, I wake up at 6 o'clock, go for a little walk, uh, get back, and I have time to work on YouTube, make some coffee, enjoy my day. I'm not rushed to make my bed or anything. And, um... It's kind of like the Miracle Mornings, if you guys have ever heard that. Uh, it's, it's where, you know, you're so busy with work, and then when you come home, uh, you don't really have time for anything. So the way this guy that wrote this book is called Miracle Mornings, um, basically, he wakes up extremely early and then knocks out, a, you know, some errands does like uh, 30 minutes of cleaning, and then maybe 30 minutes of reading some articles, and then 15 minutes of reading a book, and then 30 minutes of working out. Uh, he fits all this stuff in the morning, and it's called a miracle morning because you, when, by the time you get home, you have more time to do stuff. Essentially, it's basically working late and then waking up early. So minimizing your sleep so you can maximize what you want to do in your life because let's face it you know you, you waste a lot of time sleeping uh, apparently um, you waste 25 years of your life sleeping because you know majority of the day um, you know you're sleeping eight hours out of 24 quarter of the day so a quarter of your life gone just like that so guys uh Really prioritize things, use good time management, and we can all change our lives together, you know? Do this great hobby that we have. And I just really want to end the video with a favor from y'all. If you guys actually enjoy my videos, definitely go to your uh, alarm settings on YouTube and activate it so you see when I upload something. Uh, this way it will send right to your mobile phone or it will email you, whatever you choose, and you'll see when I upload a video and then you get to watch it uh, on the day that I upload. Because I'm doing five videos a week, doing um, every weekday, and I just want y'all to, to watch them, you know, uh, I make them for you and hopefully for, uh, when you watch it, you get motivated and, you know, we'll, we'll get better to get together. Um, so subscribe, like, comment, uh, I'll see y'all next time, alright? Cut it, 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 cut it.